Welcome back to Yes Longevity Podcast, where we give you insight on how to get fit, feel younger, and live better. Hi, I'm Chris Borda, owner of Yes Fitness and best-selling author of the book, Get Stronger, Live Longer, The Expert's Guide to Strength Training for Longevity. If you haven't picked up a copy yet, I'd love for you to up on Amazon or at my website, chrisborda.com. I'll give you some real insight on why strength training is so important for living a longer, healthier life and being able to enjoy those extra years. So what I'd like to talk to you about today, so we don't have much housekeeping going on other than uh, what's going on, I guess our holiday hours will be closing on Christmas Eve about noon time. We're running some special classes Christmas Eve morning and we'll be closed Christmas Day and the 26th, three day weekend. Um, so everybody can just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Don't feel guilty about not getting to work out. In the meantime, the topic of discussion for today is the core. And why am I talking about the core today? Well, I was discussing this with some of my clients the other day as to why we don't do sit-ups and why we do what we do and how we do it. So I thought I would just um, try to clarify all that information. So let's just start off with the core is probably the most overused and misunderstood term in the whole fitness industry. Uh, you know, actually sometimes I cringe when I have to talk about it with clients or in discussions with the core because it's so really misunderstood and to know and understand what it does and what the core exercises really are. So I'm going to try to go through all that stuff with you today. But it certainly is always the hottest topic and people are always super excited. And they love to hear that an exercise is a core exercise and just about every exercise that we do in our facility is a core exercise because we don't use machines. So we allow and we force the body to stabilize as we do our exercises. So the core is constantly being coached and trained uh, during our programs here. So without getting too far into a rabbit hole here, I would just like to define the core like this, okay? It is made up of the muscles that act upon the pelvis, the lumbar spine, and the rib cage. Those muscles are what we consider core muscles. They act upon the pelvis, the lumbar spine, which is the low back, and the rib cage. And I'm going to just go through the muscles that I consider the core muscles. They're not all the muscles. These are the major muscles. And you might be surprised by how many muscles we consider the core. One is a diaphragm. Two, yeah, the diaphragm, we consider that part of the core. The rectus abdominis, which is that straight muscle down through the middle, which everyone thinks is the core, right? The erector spinae, which is muscles in the back. Internal, external obliques, those muscles that crisscross in our body. The transverse abdomen, which is the muscles inside, or kind of like wrapped around below the internal, external obliques. The pelvic floor, the quadratus lumborum, which rides up. The, the spine, uh, the multifidi, which is again back in the spine, the glutes, the hamstrings, the rotator cuff, part of the hip rotators, I told you, the hip rotators, and the latissimus miss dorsi, which is the big V muscle in your back goes all the way down into the lumbar spine. So these, all these muscles are the major muscles of the core, and they all need to be tr trained correctly to really get... Um, the strongest core you could possibly have. So it's more than just trying to train the rectus abdominis and getting a six pack. That is the least of our worries when we're training the core muscles. It's the least efficient way to try to train the core. You need to train all of those muscles. So one way I want you to think about the core is to think of the core as a canister or a can, okay? And the goal of a core exercise is to keep the top of the can or the canister, the diaphragm, facing the bottom of the can or the canister, which is the pelvic floor, while resisting unwanted movement. So the core is here. It's supposed to be really stiff. And it allows us to transfer energy or power between the lower extremities to the upper extremities and vice versa from the upper extremities down to the lower extremities. And we want to make sure that it's strong enough so that there's not a leakage or that the movement occurs that we don't want to occur. So core training 
has gone through probably the biggest changes in the last decade or so, or in the fitness industry recently, okay? First, there became this whole emphasis on stabilization rather than allowing motion in the core or the lumbar spine. We want to have stabilization in that lumbar spine. And the second is this idea of utilizing the cross-linking of the body's fascial chains. So the muscles in the upper right quadrant cross all the way down the front of the body into the front of the left, the, the left part of the front of the body, okay? And vice versa, there's a big X pattern in the front of the body and there's a big X pattern in the back of the body and how the fascias all link together. Now this really has come specifically from the teaching of Josh Hankin, who is the creator of, creator of uh, DVRT, uh, dynamic variable resistance training, which is something that we use here all the time, and utilizing the sandbags. So, for example, just to understand this a little bit, because we understand stabilization, we want that core really to be nice and tight. But when we train the core, if we're utilizing a sandbag, and we do like a hip bridge, so we're lying on the back, we're going to take that bag, and we pull it across right in front of our chest. And when we do that, it turns on all the muscles in the back of our body. And when those muscles get turned on, and then we go to bridge up, it engages the muscles in the upper back all the way down through the core and then down to the back side of the leg, the hamstrings. So that's what we talk about from the lats all the way down into the hamstrings is the core. So, I mean, it's super interesting how we try to connect those, that fashion, how we train that fascia so we really train the core as effectively as we possibly can. So again, the core, the primary function of the core is to resist unwanted motion, to tie the upper body and the lower body together to maximize its potential to, to hold the body in place while minimizing any potential leaks or unwarranted movement. That's kind of what the core does. That's how it functions. So one thing I want to do is dispel the myth that you need to do crunches. We don't do crunches. I can't really remember the last time crunches were in our programming. Um, probably a decade ago since we've really done crunches here. And why that is, is research over the last decade or decade and a half done by Dr. Stuart McGill, strictly focuses on the, uh, the spine in his research. He shows that crunches are not good for the spine. They're not good for the lumbar spine. That lumbar flexion, that crunching motion is not good for the spine. And that bridges and planks are actually safer than crunches and they're more effective in training the core than crunches. So. Why would you do crunches? So then we have EMG research that has concluded that planks or abdominal rollouts, okay, are the most effective exercises to activate abdominal muscles and upper extremity muscles while minimizing the low back and the rectus femoris or the hip flexor muscles. So we don't want the hip flexors to work while we're training the core. We want the abdominal muscles. We want all those muscles that I just talked about a few minutes ago to be involved when we're doing a, an effective core exercise. It doesn't happen when you do crunches. Bridges, planks, all forms of those type of exercises are safer than crunches and they're more effective than crunches. So why do crunches? There's no reason to do crunches. Most people hate doing crunches. And when I tell them that we don't do crunches, they're excited because they don't want to ever do them again. And the rollout or the plank are extremely effective in activating those abdominal exercises. So those are the type of exercises you should be putting into your program. So another question that comes up here often is why do we train the core first? Why do we want to fatigue the core muscles when we go to do other exercises? And then maybe increase the risk for injury because the core now cannot do what it needs to do. Well, we train them first because they're typically the weakest muscles in the body, okay? The core is typically the weakest when someone comes to our door. So I'm a big believer in that the weakest area of the body should be trained first. It should be a priority. This way we get the most out of our training, the most bang for our buck. So that's why we 
do our core training first because we want to get that taken care of. We want to make sure that that is a priority. So when we think about training the core and what it does and how we should train the core. So there's four ways, <coughs> excuse me, four ways when we take a look at that. So when there's four categories, the first category is anti-extension, an, pardon me, anti-extension. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to resist excessive extension of the lumbar spine. What is that? That's arching in the back. So when we try to do our core exercises, we want to try to make sure that everything is engaged and we don't have a lot of excessive extension, which is a plank exercise. And a lot of the exercises that we do in the facility require a plank and we're not even really thinking about it, but it is a plank. But just to keep it simple right now, anti-extension exercise would be a plank. So then we have an anti-rotation, okay? So resisting rotation of the lumbar spine. It can involve a little bit of anti-extension at times, but an exercise that would be really be focusing on anti-rotation. What would that be? So we're trying not to rotate the lumbar spine. That would be something like a cable, tall kneeling, anti-rotation press. When we're kneeling down, we're pressing out with that cable, and the cable is trying to pull us one way, and we're trying to stay nice and tall and steady and not have that rotation. So there's anti-extension, there's anti-rotation, and then there's anti-lateral flexion. Anti-lateral flexion. We don't want to go side to side like this, okay? That is not what the body's designed to do. So how do we train? We want to resist lateral flexion of the lumbar spine or simply put a side plank is an anti-lateral flexion exercise. And then the fourth way is hip flexion. It's flexion of the hip joint with a stable lumbar spine. What does that mean? That's like doing a hanging knee raise or a hanging leg raise. So the spine is, is motionless and we're pulling our knees up, tucking our knees up, or we're lifting our legs up in a nice straight leg raise. So those are the four categories. And there can be some blur between these two categories when we do some exercises, but we always like to categorize an exercise based on whatever the dominant thing that we're trying to perform in that exercise is. So now that we've done the different categories, okay, there's like different levels within those categories in each, each area. So for example, where there's a state, static stabilization. So static stabilization means there's no motion occurring in any limb of the body while performing the exercise. For example, a static plank. So we know that planks can be static and then planks can be more dynamic. So then we go toward dynamic stabilization. That's where the hip joint is stable while the shoulder joint moves. So when we talked about uh, in a plank, it could be a plank tap, okay? So in a plank position, we're gonna just reach out and tap with our hands. Or like a chop. A chop motion is a dynamic stabilization exercise. It has to be anti-rotation. It's dynamic stabilization because we're moving the upper body while those hips are stable. Or maybe even um, on a suspension chain or a jackknife or a knee tuck, so your upper body stable and you're driving those knees, knees in and out. But that, those are dynamic stabilization, so static stabilization and dynamic stabilization in all the other, in the four categories of exercises that we talked about a minute ago. And then there's something that we call integrated stabilization. So that's when dynamic motion occurs in the shoulders and the hips with relatively stable lumbar spine. That typically more of a combination exercise where we might be doing something like a cable reverse lunge. Pardon me. Yeah, so reverse lunge with a cable single arm neutral grip row. So we're doing a reverse lunge while we're doing a row at the same time. So the upper body's moving and the lower body's moving yet the core is stable. There's some rotation because we're doing a single arm. There's some extension because we're trying not to lean back as we do the exercise. So that's a very dynamic exercise and it's an integrated exercise because the upper body and lower body are both moving. So that's how we look at the core. We look at the core as being a canister where it's really gonna stabilize the body and it needs to stabilize the body in, in different motions or planes of motion, extension, lateral flexion, rotation, and hip flexion. And then within those areas, we're going to have just a static exercise 
or a dynamic exercise, or maybe even integrated st stabilizing exercise. So there's three different levels of typically difficulty within each of those categories. And that's how you have to take a look at the core and trying to train all those muscles, not just the rectus abdominis so you can get a six pack, because that's not what's going to be the most efficient way to train your core and it's not going to give you the best results, the results you're looking for if you're trying to perform better, if you're just trying to feel better, not to have any kind of back pain. If you're trying to move a little bit better, this is what needs to be done when, you, when you're taking a look at a true, solid, well-designed core, core uh, program. So, do you have it? I hope that gives you some insight. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I'd be more than happy to answer a question for you. And... Um, that's it for today. I appreciate you taking the time to listen to me, what I have to say. I hope you have a great week. I'm sure it's real busy, so I really appreciate you taking time during this time of the year because it is a super busy time of the year for everyone. Even with COVID going on, it's extremely busy. So um, I don't take it for granted that you, you listen to what I have to say. But you can listen to me again next Tuesday at 3.30 where I'm going to give you more insight on how to get fit, feel younger, and live better. Thanks for watching.